subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. So, man, it's another privileged time for me to come your way on your favorite Joy Learning channel as we go through some lessons for today. I'm your favorite facilitator for mathematics for junior high school R, Samuel Okwabi. You can call me Samus. It promises to be exciting another time to learn something relating to mathematics. Look at the diagram on your screens and it is an indication of what we want to look at today. Okay, so what is it? What can you see on your screen? What is it? Yes, maybe you said it's a bar chart. It's a diagram of a bar chart. If you said so, then you are right. That's correct. And that tells us that for today, we want to be looking at the concept of bar charts for junior high school too. Okay, we're going to look at how data can be collected, analyzed, and put in the form of a picture or a diagram by way of a bar chart. And then we'll see how that lesson should, how far that lesson should go. And so, for this moment, we are going to go through some discussions, some analysis, so that we'll be able to draw a bar chart for a given data. And when we are able to draw the bar chart on our own from a given data, then we'll use that knowledge or we'll build on that knowledge to be able to interpret bar chart. Okay, so certain times we are given the data, then we draw the bar chart. At other times, we are given the bar chart and then we interpret the, the, the bar chart. Okay, so we are going to look at these two in the next few minutes. I want to urge you to stay glued to your TV set because there is something new you can always speak from here. Of course, as far as bar chart is concerned, we would need the graph sheet or a graph book or a grid book and then a rule, a pencil and some pens. So I want to urge you to go grab those items so that whatever thing we are doing here, you can practice it. You can be doing it alongside in your homes or from wherever you are watching from and then that will cement your understanding and as we move on. So we'll get a graph book or a grid book, a rule, a, pen, a pencil or a pen, and then let's go through this. Okay, so bar charts, it belongs to the main field of statistics. Okay, so when we put data by way of a, a, a bar chart, we represent data pictorially using bar charts. It's an aspect of the field of statistics. Okay, in other words, bar chart forms part of statistics okay and so what is statistics we say that it's about using scientific methods that enables us to collect data and when we have collected the data we can organize the data we can summarize the data we can present the data and that's the aspect we are coming to look at now how we can present the data one of the ways by which we present data is by the use of charts and one of such ch charts is the bar chart or the bar graph, okay? So we present the data and we can also make analysis from the data, okay? Or we can interpret the data. What does the data mean if I see a bar chart? What does it mean to me? How should that data speak to me? Okay, we are going to be looking at that so that we'll be able to draw some valid conclusions from the data that we see. Okay, so statistics, we can have bar charts, we can have line graph, we can have pie charts, okay, different forms of uh, representation. But for today, we'll focus on only the bar chart, and then we see how it is represented. So let's kick start and talk about bar chart. It is one of the common means of graphically representing a frequency distribution okay it has become the most popular 
one of the common ways of representing data it is the means by which understanding of the data becomes more simpler okay as compared to the other forms and so people tend to use it more and more often okay it's simple to do and then simple to also interpret when you see it immediately it tells you who is getting more who is doing less or something like that okay and so it's a diagram that consists of series of horizontal or vertical bars okay so we can represent bar charts sometimes horizontally sometimes you can represent it vertically it's a, it's a style that depends on on your choice okay but one thing of equal note of importance is that they must have equal width and they must have they must have equal spacing in other words the spacing between the bars the space between the first and the second bar should be the same as the space between the second and the third bar okay so equal spacing between the bars and the width of the bars should also be equal okay one bar should not be more in terms of width than the other so if the width is two centimeters for the first bar it means that all other bars must be two centimeters in width and when we do that that is how we can present our bar chart correctly and accurately and the bars represent the various categories of the data okay so for instance if i was looking at how much rain fell within a certain period during the days of the week okay so can i have it for sunday i can have it for monday for tuesday for wednesday so on monday there was maybe 800 uh, measure of the rain and then maybe for tuesday there was maybe 900 measure of it so each of the bars represent the various categories of the data okay so the more it is the higher the bar or the longer the bar it is okay so that's interesting to note then let's also note that there are different types of bar charts that we can have okay we have a bar chart that is described as a simple bar chart okay we can have a simple one we can have a component or a group or sometimes we call it a stacked stacked bar charts okay but for the purposes of our our education and and the, the scope of our curriculum or syllabus we are going to focus our attention on the simple bar chart because that's what usually is allowed by our curriculum by our syllabus okay and it's it's easy to understand it's simple to do that's why it goes by the name the simple bar chart so in the simple bar chart like we have said the height or the length depending on whether you are using the vertical bars or the horizontal bars the height or the length of each of the bar is equal to its frequency okay so if i was looking at the number of people born on a certain day in the class so all those that were born on monday how many were they they were 18 so it means that the height of monday should correspond to the frequency of monday which is 18. okay those that were born on tuesday how many were they they were 22. then means that the height or the length of the bar for tuesday should be 22 the same as the frequency okay that's what it is so as you are going to plot the graphs as you are going to draw the graphs or the charts the height or the length of the bar of each bar for each category should be the same as its frequency okay great then the distance between the bars should also be the same we have noted that already these are things that as examiners we look out for when we are marking and scoring your graph for bar charts okay you cannot have different spacing it should be the same so if you are leaving if you decide to leave one centimeter space in between the bars let it be the same from beginning all throughout to the end okay so that we know that the spacing becomes equal and the same great again when you are describing each bar you know in bar charts when we draw a bar we need to identify the bar 
okay so this one is for maybe monday this bar is for maybe tuesday this is for maybe wednesday we identify them sometimes it comes with labels sometimes it comes with values or numbers okay but make sure that when you are describing each bar we put whether it is the, a label or by way of a writing a text or a word or it is a number let it be in the middle of the bar some people are, 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 are fond of, you know, putting the number for the bar at the edge, at the beginning of the bar, okay? On the graph sheet, when they are labeling it, they put it at the beginning of it, instead of being in the middle of the bar, okay? So as we go on, I'm going to give you practical illustrations of what I'm talking about. But let's note it now that if you are writing the description of the bar, for instance, this one is Monday. Let it be in the middle of the bar at the axis, the, the, the horizontal axis where the bars are sitting on. Thank you. A typical bar chart should also have what we call the frequency or the number of student axis. Sometimes we call it the frequency axis. Sometimes it's called the number of students Axis, number of students, number of candidates, number of people. It depends on the, the question or the data given. Okay. But for short, we can call it the frequency axis. And so we don't have anything called X axis or Y axis in bar charts. Many students, because once they see the graph work and they draw their axis, X axis, Y axis. No, please, for bar chart. We don't have X axis or Y axis. The axes are named this way. We have the frequency axis, or which we are also saying can also be called the number of students axis or number of candidates or number of people or depending on the data. Okay, we have that one. And then we also have the axis for the data. So if it's about height, we have an axis for height. If it's about the ages, we, it is an axis for ages, not X. If it is about marks that people scored in an exam, it is the axis for marks. So when you are writing, when you draw the axis, you label it marks, not X axis. The frequency axis is not labeled Y axis. It is labeled frequency or number of students, or as the case may be, okay? And then, the data type is also labeled by its name, not x-axis. Okay. Right. So we are going to be seeing examples of these ones. Then we also have a title. Every bar chart you draw must have a title. Okay. So what is it about? It's a bar chart showing the marks that students obtain in an exam. That's a title. Or it's a bar chart showing the heights of people in the class. Okay, so what the question or the data is about, you have to title it appropriately so that, you know, anybody who sees your data must know or will know what that data is talking about. So that's a title. And then finally, it must also have a scale. So what scale are you using? Okay, for every two centimeters, what is it representing for you? So that we will be able to, in the way of interpretation, we'll be able to interpret the data so well and so accurately. Okay, so this should be part of our understanding as we are going through the thing. So this is a big caution, and I have indicated it already. Okay, do not label your axis as X or as Y axis in bar charts. You can easily be penalized for that. I've said it already, but I'm indicating it to you by way of a caution, okay? Don't draw a vertical axis and label it Y axis. And don't draw a horizontal axis and label it Y axis, okay? The vertical axis is a frequency axis or number of students or number of candidates or number of pupils, depending. The horizontal axis is a type of data axis okay so if it's about marks it will be an axis for marks so you just indicate marks if it's heights you indicate height if it's ages you just indicate ages and that's how it works for bar charts so please take note of this caution and be guided as such okay 
that's great so that's a typical example of the simple bar chart that we have on our screens and that's what we are going to be looking at this is the form and this is the type of bar chart that we want to look at tonight is a simple bar chart and you can see from your screens all the things we have spoken about are clearly indicated okay so we have first of all the axis for number of students okay that's the vertical axis we have the axis for the month okay axis for month okay so january february march all the way through to december i didn't label it x axis i labeled it month okay then i also have the title the birthday of students by month birthday of students by month and then i have the scale which is one unit length equals two students that's the scale underlying there for you to see okay that's the title circled there for your attention okay birthday of students by month is our title then our skill is the one underlined for your consumption for you to see one unit length equals two students so this is the complete set of what a bar chart should look like okay the spacing between each of the bars are the same the height of the bars correspond to their frequency as the data presented and then we have the frequency axis and then we have the month axis okay as we have indicated so that is it for a simple bar chart then we also can have the component bar chart and this other one looks like okay for your consumption this is how the component bar chart looks like so we, we cluster a, a group of them or a component of them and put them together to help in the analysis okay and like i said we are not going to go into this you know you know uh, into details we'll look at the simple one as that is what our curriculum allows us to do but for short it is a data presented in quarters so we want to look at how each of the quarters behaved in a certain category so in newspaper a for first quarter second quarter third quarter and fourth quarter how did they perform how did they behave we are putting them by way of component or as a group okay so that we can help with their analysis interesting right great okay so now having done that we can begin to put some things into practice what we have been saying so far so let's take this first question and i want you to look at it carefully maybe you can read it together with me on our screens is there can we take it yes let's go one two and we go the following table shows the frequency distribution of the number of letters in the surnames of some students in the school so that's the table presented okay so what are we doing our simple task is for us to draw a bar chart for the distribution a bar chart for the distribution so take note of the of the table you can take a screenshot of it nevertheless i'll be presenting it in the next subsequent you know slides for you to you know look at it okay so that's it that we have here we have our graph there you can also pick up your graph and pick up your rule and your pencil and then we see whether we can work this out together okay so we need our graph is there and then we also have our frequency axis or the number of student axis i have it already done okay so my vertical axis i have labeled it number of students okay and then i have given my my measures on the frequency axis 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so then it means that i was using two centimeters to one unit okay that's my skill that i've chosen when i finish i will indicate that as part of my work so two centimeters to one unit on my frequency axis okay so i have drawn my frequency axis and then now i can begin with my bar chart so i draw my first bar chart to correspond to what seven okay so as you can see my first bar the length of it corresponds to frequency seven 
okay and as the table gave or as the question gave the number of letters which is the first one which is four it is having a frequency of seven so that's it then i can move on and do the rest of the work and what was that for it was for four the number of letters so whereas which has which have four letters in them they were seven in all okay so as you can see i have put that four in the middle of the bar for four can you see that this is what i was talking about okay some people come and write the four here that's what i was indicating that no we don't do it like that we don't write the the figure at the beginning of the bar it is not supposed to be there rather it is supposed to be in the middle of the bar as you can see okay so don't put a four at the beginning of the bar okay great so once my first bar is ready it means that i can move on and do the second bar okay and that should also correspond to the frequency for for it so the number of letters which is five whereas which have five letters in them their frequency was three so that's it i do that for it and make sure that the spacing between the bars are the same the width of the bars are the same as you can see from my demonstration okay so with that again i have to identify which bar that is is for what five so you can see in the middle of the bar five are you following this i want to believe so okay nevertheless if you think something is not so clear to you I want you to go to our Facebook, YouTube pages, right? Joy Learning TV, and then put that question that you are not so clear with over there, and we will get back to you, and I'll respond accordingly, okay? So, great. Now, let's move on quickly so that we move on with the rest of the bars. So, the next bar is 6. Number of letters is 6. What is the frequency? It's 2. I draw it neatly, and then I also make sure that I put the, the description there in the middle of the bar, okay? So this is what we do all throughout till we finish for the rest of the bars. Okay, that's all. As simple as that. Okay, so the next bar is for seven. Number of letters, okay? It has seven letters. Where's that have seven letters in them? And what is their frequency? How many of them were, did, we have, did we have in the data? We're having eight. So the bar for seven corresponds to the frequency of eight. So we draw it and then we indicate the description eight in the middle of the bar. If I ask you to continue yours, you should be able to continue appropriately, right? Okay. So then quickly, we can move on and get the next bar, which is for five and is described as eight. We can move on to get our next bar, which is for 9. And what is its frequency? It's 3. Okay? Then we can move on to get the last bar, which is for 10. It has 10 letters in it. And how many of them did we get? We got only one. So the height of that bar should be 1. As simple as that. As simple as that. Okay? So now that we have this, I have also clearly indicated my number of letters, the axis for that one, as underlined, okay, for your consumption. I've indicated, I have indicated that one. I also have the indication for the number of students, which is the vertical axis. And then I have drawn my bars. What do you think I'm left with? For my bar chart to be complete by way of presentation. The title and then the the scale so it means that i can have i have to go and then write my title i can write my title as a bar chart showing number of letters in words okay and then beautifully I can underline my title so that it appears as such. Okay, so that's it. 
what was my skill as I indicated skills for bar charts are necessary for the vertical axis okay so it was two centimeters equals one unit okay so that is my skill also indicated and that gives me a perfect representation of a bar chart I hope you got it right okay so let's move on quickly so that we see whether we can go through another session of it and then we see whether we will be able to answer some questions based upon that so let's go at question two the table shows the distribution of marks of students in a class test and that's the table we have marks and we have frequency we have marks from one two three four five and six and then their frequency is five six five three four two respectively okay then we want to ask that using the graph sheet i want you to draw a bar chart for the distribution okay now when we have drawn that bar chart we're going to ask how many students took the test okay so we have started the process of interpreting the the the, the chart that we draw how many students took the test and what is a modal mark what is the modal mark okay so let's go through and then we see so have presented the question the data on this page for our consumption so that we can clearly see what is going on okay so let's go so i have my bar charts i mean my graph sheets prepared down okay i did it this way to save my time okay so in case you are also following me it means at this moment you need to draw your vertical axis and draw also your horizontal axis i already have it done okay then now that i have my vertical and the horizontal axis drawn i can begin some form of work okay so by this time i'll have to decide within myself as the one answering the question what skill am i going to use okay what skill am i going to use so i look at the data given and i decide on the scale so the highest frequency which is going to be done on the vertical axis by this data is six okay so on my graph sheet how many of the two centimeters can i have on the vertical axis okay so for me i have eight that's why you see i have my vertical axis labeled up to eight okay in your graph sheet you may have 12 okay so if it is 12 of the two centimeters that you can have on your vertical axis how are you going to allocate them to be able to suit the data given so since for this one the highest frequency is six it means if i, I use two centimeters to one unit for this my graph sheet is appropriate if you have a graph sheet that is having 12 of the two centimeters on the vertical axis okay it means you can decide to use four centimeters to one unit okay if all even the same two centimeters to one unit and it's appropriate it can work out in both ways all we want is that present your bars as big as possible okay maximize the the, the page on the graph so that your graphs all of it will not appear to have been you know squashed at a small space on your graph sheet okay so that's it so i decided to use two centimeters to one unit and so for my first bar it is five that's why you see that one there that's for five and i label it in the middle as one that's mark one those that got one maybe one out of ten okay they were five in all so those that got one they were five and i indicated it as such then i do the second bar okay which is those that got two how many of them were they they were six so you can see their bar corresponds to six okay and then again i indicate it for them their labeling or their description it is two this is what i do for the rest of the bars and i hope by now you have understood the trend because this is the second one we are doing okay so this is what i continue to do for the rest of the bars i draw it and i describe it i draw the bar and i describe it i draw the bar and i describe it so i'm left in my last bar which is six okay what is the frequency 
it is 2. So I draw the bar to correspond to the frequency 2. Okay. And then I describe it. 6. Okay. So if you are the one handling this and you are here, what will you desire to do next from here? In other words, what is left to make your graph or your bar chart a perfect bar chart? I've not labeled my axis. I've not written my title. I've not written my scale. So these are the things that are left. And so from here, they are the things I have to look at now. So my frequency axis is now labeled. Okay, you can see it clearly now. And then maybe my max axis should also come. So that is it. I will label them clearly. And then we see. Okay, now so now I'm left with my title and then also my skill. So the title will come. What is it? It is a bar chart. It's always a bar chart that is showing something. What is it showing? This one is showing marks of students. Okay. What scale did I use? I used two centimeters equals one unit. So in your case, the scale that you used is what you will indicate. It's what you will show on your graph page. Okay. So that's the, the picture of the graph for the bar charts. Okay. So that's it. Now we are asked some few questions. For instance, how many students took the test? Okay. So from here, we can handle that question. Number of students that took the test. Okay. How many were they? So we show it by adding the number of students who got the various marks. So for instance, how many students got one? Okay, so let me reverse. Let me go back so that we can see the table again. How many students got one? They were five. Okay. How many students got two? They were six. That means so far, how many students have we gotten? Eleven. Five plus six, right? How many students got three? They were five. So we keep adding on those students, the number of students that got the various marks in the class. And as we keep adding, whatever we get, by the time we add all of them, gives us the number of students who took the test. Okay. So then it gives us a data like this. 5 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3 plus 4 plus 2. And that gives us 25. Okay. So please, the caution here is that some people will do this addition in their mind or mentally and then they will just indicate the final answer 25 okay please it is not advisable to do it that way it is advised that you show how you came by your answer 25 by doing the addition for whoever is going to score you or mark your work to know how you came by it because there will be mark allotted for that so show us that it is 5 plus 6 plus 5, plus 3, plus 4, plus 2, before you come down and give us the answer for it. Okay, so if this is being scored, you will see here, M1, your method, methodology 1, and then you see here, A1. That means that anybody who loses or who did not show the working will lose the methodology mark. Okay, and in maths, when we are scoring, and we don't see how you got your answer, but your answer is there, since we didn't know how you came by it, we sometimes ignore your answer mark and don't give it to you also. Okay, so you may end up losing all. So to avoid that, please, let's show how we get our answers. Then, we're also asked to find the modal mark. Okay, so when we say mode, it talks about the highest frequency. In other words, in the class, which mark did people get the more or the most? Okay, so the, the word that signifies mood is most, most, okay. When we did a test, a number of students got different marks. The marks that the student got, which of them did more people or the most people got it, okay. And if you watch from the diagram or from the bars that we have drawn, it is two. It is two. You got the highest, okay. It got five, it got six, sorry. Six students got two. 
maybe out of 10. And it was more than any other mark. So the more that mark is to Okay, that's great. Can I give you some five minutes to go through this one as we come back and then we look at other ones. So within the next five minutes, please take your time and screenshot this one and then present it for me on the different graph sheets. At the end of the day, I'll ask you to post your answer or your results or your graph. You take a picture of it and post it to us by our social media handles. I will look at it and I will see whether you were, ready, you were really following the lesson. So five minutes, I'll come back with you. If you have a device that can take a snapshot, I urge you to take a snapshot of it and then look on as you try something on your own. Okay, maybe you should be wrapping up by now. You should be wrapping up by now. Okay, so my utmost concern is on the question B. If all candidates who obtained grades above grade 3 were awarded credit, find the probability that a candidate selected at random obtained credit. I think my major concern has to do with that one. So as for A, which is asking you to draw the bar chart for the distribution, I'm sure that one is not a challenge after going through two examples. Okay, so let's look at it. Okay, so I expected your graph, I mean your bar chart to appear this way. If you got something similar to what I am getting, I think that you did the right thing. Okay, so this is our, our graph, that's our title. Okay, now let's look at the B. If all candidates who obtained grades above grade 3 were awarded credit, find the probability that a candidate selected at random obtained credit. Okay, so it means that we need to find how many people obtained credit. And how do we get that? Everyone that obtained a mark greater than 3, okay, will get a credit. Okay, so that means that those who got grade 4, grade 5, grade 6, they are the ones you are interested in. Okay, so how many are they? Those who got grade 4, they were 5. Those who got grade grade 5, they were 4. And those who got grade 6, they were 10. Okay, so it means that when we put them together, we end up getting uh, 19. So it means that in all, the number of people who are supposed to be awarded credit are going to be 19 in all. Okay, 19. But the question didn't ask for how many are going to be awarded credit. The question asked for what is the probability of picking at random a candidate that was awarded credit. Okay, but the first stage is for us to know how many of them, you know, qualified to obtain or, or, or to be awarded the credit. How many of them qualified? And so we do so by adding those who got grade above grade 3, which is grade 4, grade 5, grade 6. And they were 19. Now that we've seen the total of them, those that are in that category, we can find the probability, okay, by dividing the number of them by the total number. And so how many of them were in the distribution? The total number of people in the distribution, those who took the test or the exam. 
Okay, that one too has to be added to get an answer. And so by a convention, we add their frequencies for the number of people who got the various grades. We add up their frequencies. So that gives us 2 plus 3 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 10. And that gives us 30. So it means that in the class, they were 30. Okay? So if they were 30, 19 of them got the credit grade. They got more than grade 3. So they were awarded credit. So picking one of them at random by way of probability is going to be the 19 divided by the 30. Probability is the number of events divided by the total number of people under discussion, or which is simply called the sample space. The sample space. So if we have 19 of them, out of a total of 30 of them, the, the probability of picking one of the 19s is 19 out of 30. Okay, that's great. That's great. And it is interesting to know that you are following the discussion that is going on. I want us to quickly, you know, move to the aspect where we are going to be presented with a question, with a bar chart. Then we will analyze the bar chart, interpret the bar chart. Okay. We have seen the one where we are giving the question and then we draw the bar chart. And the question is going to give us a bar chart so that we interpret the bar chart. So look at this question. The bar chart below is for the distribution of marks in a class test. Okay, the bar chart. So I'll show you the bar chart later on. But let's look at the questions. The first question is asking us to write down the frequency table for the distribution. So when I show you the bar chart, I will show it to you in the Jiffy. Okay, we are going to use the bar chart to come out with a frequency table. Okay, then we'll use a table to find the mean, the mean mark. And then again, if the pass mark is four, how many students failed the test? So this is a question. I want you to take a snapshot of it. Now, as I project to you the bar chart. And so this is a bar chart, okay? They, they presented a bar chart to us. It's a question. We are going to interpret it. Then the first question is for us to get a frequency distribution table out of this bar chart. Okay, so look at it. It means that what are we going to have at our title, the titles for each of the columns? Okay, it's going to be max. It means we are talking about max, as you can see here. Max, okay. And then the other column is going to be what? Frequencies. So that each of the marks that we have there, we can present it over there. Okay, so look at the titles of the, of the bar chart very clearly. Look at the, the, I mean the bars and then the width of them. Look at the bars and then the width of them very clearly. And then it gives us an indication of what figures we are going to be having in the frequency distribution table. Okay, so if you study it carefully, we'll see that the table that can be drawn from here will appear this way. Okay, so it means that we have the max ranging from 1 to 10. Of course, we're having, you know, uh, 9 visible bar charts. Okay, look at it. 9 visible bar charts. Okay, but it appeared, if you look at the descriptions, it appears that and the spacing between them, if you have the, the spacing between them, it appears that there was one that was missing somewhere. Because the spacing between the bars should be the same. Okay? The spacing between the bars should be the same. And I beg your pardon, this thing was supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. And this is two, rather, three, four. So it should be appearing this way. Okay. All right. So you can see clearly that something is missing somewhere. Okay, so that should be put into perspective when we are drawing our table. All right, so now it means that this is our mark column. Then we have our frequency column here indicated by F. The marks also are being indicated by X. Okay, and for the purposes of the question that was asking us to find the mean for the distribution, we have a different column FX, a different column fx okay so the marks 
as you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way to 10. Okay. The frequency for Mark 1 is 0. Why? We didn't see any, any bar there. There was no bar there. Okay. That of 2 is 3 from the bars. That of 3 is 2. That of 4 is 1. Okay. That of 5 is 4. Okay. And the way we see it, that was the way it appeared in the bars for us. Okay, so for 6 is 5, for 7 is 4, for 8 is 1, for 9 is 2, for 10 it is 3. Okay, and now to help us find the mean from the table, we need to find the summation of fx. And so we create a column for fx, the product of frequency and the max. The product of the frequency and the max. In other words, f times x. And the f values are the frequency values. The x values are the max values. Okay, so the first one, 1 times 0 or 0 times 1 gives us a 0 here. Okay, and that's what we do for each of them. We multiply the f by the x to get each of these max here as our fx max. So here, for instance, 6 times 5 will give us a 30. Okay, and that's what we do for each of them. 3 times 10 will give us a 30. That's what we do for each of them, okay? And then one thing you have to make sure of is that always get the summation of your frequency as well as your fx values. Get their summations, okay? Because you are going to use them in calculating the mean. Even if you are not going to use them in calculating mean, the, there is a provision or a mark allocated for that in the marking scheme. Okay, so ensure that you bring your summation f, meaning the total of your f's, and then your summation fx, the total of your fx's. Okay, so that's great. So that's the frequency table. Now we can find the mean, and since we have the summation of the fx, and then the summation of the f, we can conveniently find our mean. And mean is given by summation fx divided by summation f. That's from a frequency table, okay? So our summation fx was 150, we, we sorted it, okay? And then our summation f was 20. So we divide it in that way, and then we end up getting our mean mark, our mean mark. So this is what we do. This is what we do. I beg your pardon, the summation f wasn't 20, it was 25, okay? It was 25 rather so 150 divided by 25 that should give us 6 150 divided by 25 that should give us 6 okay that's great okay so we have seen a question on how we can interpret a data and the last one was asking that we should find the number of people who failed if the pass mark was 4 Okay, so it means that those that failed were those that got three, those that got two, and those that got one. Okay, so again, we look at the number of people who got those figures. Okay, how many of them got one? How many of them got two? How many of them got three? These are the people that will fail. Okay, they are the ones that will fail. And then we see from the chart that those that got one, they were zero. Okay, they were zero. Those that got uh, two, they were two. Okay, and then those that got those that got two were three. Those got those that got three were two. Okay, from the data that we saw earlier on, and so we add up their numbers. Okay, and when we add them up, we end up getting five. And again, I want to urge you to show your addition. Okay, so show your addition, and then you end up getting your methodology mark as well as your your answer mark. Okay, so that's it. That's good. So we've seen how we could take a question which is presented by way of data and use it to go to get our bar chart. And then on another hand, we have seen how a question from a bar chart can be used to draw a frequency table and answer questions based on that. I think it has been great. I want to leave you with this one so that you use it by way of an assignment so that we see whether you will be able to 
you know, score a perfect score for, for that. It's a simple one. You can do it and then post your, your responses to us on Joy Learning TV, Facebook, and YouTube. We'll look at it and then we'll get back to you and give you your feedback. Okay, so take a snapshot of it, okay, as we wrap up the lesson for today. And then I'll come your way at another day, another time. But remember, this is Joy Learning. We keep learning. My name is Samuel Okwabi. You can call me Samuks. I'll see you again. Till then, bye-bye. Joy Learning TV.